you are an active worker, it suggests that you've given your best. I said it suggests that you're going to give your best, listen to me, all the time. You're going to give your best all the time. You're going to give God your all. Whatever you do, whatever you put your hands to do, you're going to do it with all your might. You're going to give it all that you got. Your leader, your pastor don't have to worry about if they assign you something to do. They don't have to look over your shoulder. They don't have to keep checking on you every five minutes. You, you active. You're going to give your best. Come on, somebody. I didn't get many clap then, but, but we need folk that will give their best. Oh, I'm finna, I'm finna drop one on you. And, and that ain't just limited to the church. See, if you work a natural job, give your best on that natural job. Give your all on that natural job. It ain't a light switch you turn on and off. How many know that's right? See, if you let a lazy spirit or a slowful spirit get a hold to you in your house, on your job, or wherever, eventually that same spirit is going to creep over into whatever you do for God because you left a crack. You left a door open for slowfulness to get in. And so you find yourself being late for the job. You find yourself being late for other appointments, and now you can't even get to church on time. What's that have? Oh, a slowful spirit have overtaken you. Because you don't take what you, every assignment, take it serious. Whatever you do, take it serious. And this will become a part of your nature. It'll become a part of who you are. I give my best in everything I do. I don't want to put my hands on it if I ain't going to do my best. I'd rather not touch it if I'm not going to do my best. I'd rather not lay my hands on it if I'm not willing to give my all. And that's basically how I was in the world. Even before I got to say, I'm, if I'm with you, I'm going to give my all. If I'm down, I'm down. <laughs> how many of you are like that but active also suggests that, that, that you got passion about what you do man I love to see folk that work it and they got a passion for what they do if you got a passion for what you do again folk don't have to pat you on your back when you do it no you say man I got a passion to do I got a zeal to do this man I'm enthusiastic about what God has chosen for me to do yeah I got passion about that now again when you have passion it also suggests, and I really need y'all to listen, it also suggests that you have ambition. I said it suggests that you have ambition. And ambition is important, but it can be dangerous. Tell your neighbor, ambition is important, but on the other hand, it can be dangerous. And I know y'all wonder, what in the world is he talking about? Well, let me deal with it. First of all, notice the definition of what it means to have ambition. Because I do believe that if you're going to be a bona fide church worker, you got to have some ambition about yourself. Now, just giving you a, just a, a, a country definition, it, it, you got to have some get up and go about yourself. And you know what I'm talking about? That's just saying a country before I get into the other little thing. You got to have some get up and go about yourself. Because guess what? The pastor ain't going to be there every time to nudge you on the show. Come on, come on. Nor your leader. You got to have some get up and go about yourself. When you have ambition or you got some get up and go about yourself, that means you could be going through trial, but you know, hey, hey, I got to get this done. Look, I got to pray. I got to read my word. So you got to have some get up and go about you. Is that right? Okay, now, first thing ambition is, and listen to these definitions, is first of all a passion to work. Again, you got a passion to work. You got a zeal when it comes to working. And if this is the case, guess what? I can also look at your life and I can see that you got good work ethics. Woo, yeah, a person that's ambitious, they're going to have some good work ethics. You ever heard that saying, you don't put nothing in it, you don't get nothing out of it? I know we don't think that, that, that holds true in the church, but it do. You got to put something in it. Is that right? So it had to do with you got to be passionate about it. You got to have some get up and go about yourself. I remember in the book of Numbers when Israel brought back that evil report about the land of Canaan. And, and, and the people were weeping and crying and, and, and going on because they had told them the giants was in the land and, and, and we can't take the city. It's too big. It's too difficult. But it is a good city. It is something good. It's just going to require a whole lot of fighting. And the folk that we got to fight are bigger than we are. Oh, Lord, hammer, forgetting that God was with them. I don't care how big the opposition is. If God is with me, me and God are more than the whole world against me. But they forgot that. They had amnesia and got to talking all that doubt 
and wonder in reference to God. But it was two men that had passion, a zeal for working, a zeal for doing God business. That Caleb said, wait, hold on for a minute. We are well able to go up here and take the city. Caleb said, I'm ready right now to go evict them. I'm ready right now to go throw them out. Ask your neighbor, are you ready right now to go get what God has for you? Tell them, are you ready to go get it right now? Boy, if there's one thing I'm sick of, I'm sick of hearing saints about, I'm going in the enemy camp. I'm going to take back what the devil stole. I come to tell you, it's going to be a fight in order for you to get it. It's there, but you got to fight. You got a war to get what God got for you. Caleb said, we well labor. I'm ready. Let's do it. Let's do it right now. Let's don't eat. Let's don't put it off. See, when you don't have ambition, you will always put off what can be done today for tomorrow because you lack ambition. God saying this your season. He was ready to put in some work. Caleb was ready. Y'all hear me? And at that time, Caleb was old, but he was still ready to go get what God had for him. Why? This boy had a passion. See, that's when you, you can't hardly do nothing with folk that don't have a passion for ministry in the first place. It's only so far I can push you. And if you ain't got passion when I'm pushing you to excel in ministry, you're going to get upset with me. When I'm on you because I'm trying to draw the best out of you, you're going to see it as pastor too picky. He too pushy. No, he ain't. He trying to draw the best up out of you. He want God to use you to the fullest extent. Are y'all with me? So you got to have passion. Number two, when you have ambition, it is a strong desire to achieve or to accomplish goals. See, 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 if I got ambition, I got a strong desire to achieve and accomplish goals that I set. I got a strong desire. I don't just set goals, but when I set them, I want to accomplish it. I want to see it through. Some of you know there's a whole lot of folk, boy, they, they, they always setting goals. They don't even have to reach them and they'll set another one. Do you know anybody like that? They ain't reached that first goal. They'll scratch it out and set another goal. Well, what about that that you're supposed to? <laughs> Come on, it ain't enough just to set a goal. You got to have the desire to see that thing through and accomplish that goal. Is that all right? Is that all right? Trying to help us tonight because, again, that's what it's going to take when you have ambition Again, when it comes to that goal, oh, Lord, man, you're going you gonna to strive to achieve it. Now, the third thing it means when you have ambition is that it is a longing to be successful or to be productive. You have a longing for success. You, 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 have, a, you have something on the inside of you, that being God, that drives you to the point to where you're not satisfied if you're not productive. You know, I've actually gotten there in my life. In every aspect of my life, I want to be productive. It don't matter if I got eight things right. If I jacked up, I want to deal with this side. I want to see where I'm coming short here. Why am I not productive here? What's going on right here? You see what I'm saying? So when you got ambition, you got, you got a longing to be successful or to be productive. And that's the vision of the church, that we be productive in every aspect of our lives. Is that right? Now, here's the negative side of ambition. Here, here's the side that where ambition can be dangerous. And it's one word that you can put before that makes it dangerous or deadly, and that is selfish ambition. Mm, tell your neighbor, we don't want to have selfish ambition. Because everything I named to you about ambition, is it not good? Is it not biblical? Are there not biblical principles that we can tie to them? Yes. But if I'm selfish with my ambitions, then there's a problem. And I want to say to us tonight that in the body of Christ, when you look throughout the church, selfish ambition is on display. Folk doing their will instead of God's will. Folk who have their own agenda that is more important than God's agenda. They got to go, but it ain't in line with God's will. 
Oh, Lord, I'm going to deal with this thing. They live a lot of time what I call that purpose-driven life. You say, Pastor, what's wrong with a purpose-driven life? If you're a sinner, ain't nothing wrong with it. But if you're a child of God, you ain't supposed to be led by purpose. You're supposed to be led by the Holy Spirit. And see, it's a difference in being driven by purpose and being driven by the Holy Spirit. Oh, Lord. This is how folk get off track. And they get to doing something thinking it's of God, but they're actually missing God because they're just doing it for the wrong reasons. And when you're not spirit led, you miss it. You miss it. You miss it. This is the reason as saints of God, you have to test ideals, suggestions, and thoughts that come into your heart or into your mind. Boy, I'm, I'm laying the good foundation tonight. You got to test it because everything that come to you that sound good is not of God. Good ideal, but not a God ideal. Big difference between a good ideal and a God ideal. A good ideal of having you chasing something that's demonic thinking God told you to do. Well, Pastor, I see a need, and so I'm going to do it. Every time you see a need don't mean you the one to meet the need. See, just like this church, we got to know what God would have us to do. And we can't be looking at what the church do up the road or down the road that we get out of our lane and start trying to do what God calls somebody else to do because we see a need. Come on. And see, this is what got folk opening up churches that God never called. Got folk pastoring that God never chose. They one cent, they just went. <laughs> Tell your neighbor, you, you see them everywhere. everywhere. Tell your neighbor, they one cent, they, they just went. Be careful, the people that come into you trying to prophesy to you what you should be doing. Yeah, folk got folks out here doing a number of crazy stuff, talking about it was prophesied. Yeah, it was, but by who? Did you try that spirit? Whenever you get into the lane of what God would have you to do, spirits are going to try you to get you off course. People are going to try you. Because if one thing the devil hates is when he knows you in the perfect will of God. He don't mind you being at a church. He just don't want you in the right church. He don't mind you being in a auxiliary. He just don't want you in the right auxiliary. Are y'all with me? And so you got to test ideals. What God showed me, you sure is God. Pastor, I think it's God because when he spoke to me about doing it, a light was just shining so bright that, that I couldn't hardly, couldn't hardly see, Pastor. So you equate that light with God, even though you know the Bible said that Satan transformed himself into an angel of light in order to distract you, in order to get you an eye of course. You got to test it. You got to try it. Look at your neighbor and say test ideals, suggestions, and thoughts. Is that all right? Because I'm going to tell you about me. I don't want to get out the will of God. I believe the most dangerous place you can be is out the will of God. Doing what God did not choose you to do. Is that all right? But again, in the church, it's on display. As if nothing is wrong with it. That's why you have so much, so many people coveting to be other people in the church. Desiring to be somebody else other than who God made them. You got to be who God made you. That's the only way you ever go really be effective is when you start being who God called you to be. Is that all right tonight? I'm not upsetting y'all, Emma. But, but it's on display in the church. And folk don't know the difference. And so you got to teach it. We have to get away from selfish ambition. It can't just be about you. It can't just be about you and your family. Oh, can't be about you and your mama. What y'all want. And if you don't get your way, you're going to hit the high. It can't be that. It can't be that. 
Come on, we got to get rid of selfish ambition because anytime you're trying to unify with a person that's got selfish ambition, you're never going to be able to get on the same page with them. See, because some folk have a hidden agenda. They got something, a secret motive for why they do what they do. Oh, man, I know I'm teaching this. Judas was with Jesus for three and a half years, but he didn't never get right. Jesus told the disciples, he said, of all the 12, he said, yet one of you is a devil. And he betrayed a man that ain't ever did.